Yeah, so wonderful to be back in, in Canada. I once stayed in Vancouver and in Vancouver Island. We had a meeting there with therapists and this, I think, 15 years ago. It was my first impression of Canada or BC at this time. And also on Vancouver Island, you probably know there is a little um, a place for um, people with special need and um, curative education home named Ita Wegman. So it was very impressive to come in on the island um, in the woods and there was a sign of Ita Wegman. Um, and the story is old and I think most of the Canadians probably know who are um, familiar with the story of anthroposophy that Ita Wegman got an invitation to leave Switzerland in about 38, 39 uh, to come to Canada and to start anew with a clinic here in Canada because they know about all these struggles in Dornach and uh, that she lost her position in the Goethe Arnum and it was kind of an invitation for a complete new start and Liane Collot d'Abois the painter and close friends of Ita Wegman, she said Ita Wegman accepted and she would have gone to Canada if the Second World War would has, has not been started. So in a way this was an unfulfilled um, intention and later on they took it over and started with a little Ita Wegman place for curative education on um, yeah, Vancouver Island and so they invited me uh, I think 15, 17 years ago to see the place and to give some lectures. So this was the first time and I always remember this flight to Canada. I think it was my first flight at all and to the West. Um, I was always quite distant from United States of America and Canada. I had a special affinity to Canada as a a young boy, the Canadians, also in ice hockey and the nature. So for me, it was a fantastic uh, country, not at all uh, being so close to the United States, where I always felt a little distance. I, don't, I wouldn't say aromantic, but in a way, I've, I felt a distance. And at school, as a boy, I selected not to learn English, but French. Um, in fact, so, but once, once upon a time there came a publisher from the United States, uh, Gene Gallag Lee, uh, to Arlesheim and he said, I will bring you to the States, I will publish all your books in English, but first of all you have to come, because people need to see the authors, not only the books. So I said, yes, but I can't, um, I can't speak English. Yeah, you will learn. So, um, and in fact, then this was my first journey. I took my oldest son with me, Simon, and we went to Vancouver to learn a little bit English and to start. And in the airplane, I was reading um, the book of, about Ita Wegman's biography in English. It was translated. Um, um, and so Emanuel Seilmann's huge three volumes, most of you will know. And it was such a deep, deep inner experience to go to the West, to read in the airplane in this height, uh, the biography in English. And the experience was even more intense than in German before. I don't know, maybe it was the direction West, maybe it was direction Vancouver, maybe it was Ita Wegmann, but I was absolutely touched that this Ita Wegman story <laughs> and this part of anthroposophy came so close to my heart in the Hades. So the little boy was sleeping and we were on the way to Vancouver. So a long flight as you know and um, now I'm back. Constanza Kalix and me came from the general anthroposophical section. Thank you so much for this invitation. We did not know where to go. So in a way we saw, yes, Winnipeg and Toronto, but yesterday in the evening, so it was interesting then to come late by the airplane and so on the countryside here and then the rain came and surprising in a way um, and now in this wonderful tent, in this wonderful atmosphere of Christmas conference, it is not at all the Goethe Arnum, so it's not, <laughs> not a well-established Swiss building. Um, which is always out of money and complaining, the poor Goethe Arnum, um, but an enormous building, an enormous Swiss. But here in, 
in tents here on the countryside. Very wonderful if we take into account the so-called Christmas conference. And therefore I come to my theme now. I want to give an introduction, more or less spirit recalling, Rudolf Steiner and the Christmas conference. A little bit telling about the story behind the conference, also the year before the conference. From my understanding, the conference was an answer. An answer to an existing, demanding, difficult situation of society, of economy, of the world history. So, anthroposophists in Middle Europe, they have a tendency just to focus on the Christmas conference. But I always thought it is a little bit, hmm, if, if, if this conference was an answer, we should know the situation before and the need of this conference and the existential dimension of this conference. So I want to start a little bit to describe the situation and then coming closer to the conference itself. I don't know how the situation was in 23, 1923 in Canada, but I can say in Middle Europe it was a disastrous year. So it was four years after the end of the First World War who destroyed Middle Europe. Not only physically, economically, socially, mainly socially and also spiritually. So it was no more the same continent. And let's say in 1913 or 12, before the First World War broke out, you could travel around Europe without a passport. So more or less borderlines, they were not existing. So, but then, after the war, nations and borders and poverty and the political unsolved situation. There was no redemption at all. I mean, the war ended, but it went on as a civil war with all these problems of political radicalization, the call for the big state solving the problems and we know that President Wilson from the United States wanted to erect a system of democratic parliaments in Europe, but in fact it was only formally. So from the outer side they all now had democratic um, constitutions brought by the United States impulse. They were established in some years, they were all, they were all now democratic states, but in fact the border, the bottom, was full of problems, unsolved social political problems, and all these democratic states, they collapsed in a very short time. And Steiner predicted it in 1916, 17. He always said, yes, democracy is very important, but we can't just establish a parliament with parties and say, now we are democratic states, because industry and the other powers, they are still the leaders. And we have to solve the question how to organize new states, which are not national states. We need new forms to organize public life and economy and also spiritual life and also cultural life and justice. But this was all not done. They established these systems and, and then what happened the next few years, 1919, 20, 21, 22, more or less they collapsed step by step and we had an enormous um, right-wing movement, authority, dictatorships. So it started in, in Italy with Mussolini, it started previous in, in the Soviet Union with Lenin and Stalin after the revolution, it started in Spain uh, it was not Franco, it was the forerunner Primo de Re Riviero. And in Germany, which was at this time still a kind of a center of Middle Europe, it was an enormous increase of votes for the National Socialist Party of Hitler. And this did not happen in 1933, when Hitler became the Kanzler. It started in, in 23 when this party was really growing. So at the end of 1923, they have had 55,000 members and they had a weekly organ, Völkischer Beobachter, which was br bringing the ideology of National Socialism to the people and economy was collapsing, inflation was incredibly high and 
there was such an aggressivity in, in especially the German country, and anthroposophy has had nothing, has had no place at all at this time. So Steiner was offended in the newspapers. There was a lot of defamation. It was civil war atmosphere, and spiritual impulses with free schools, free anthroposophical clinics. Um, a free university, so a, a school for spiritual science, an independent university. This was for a Hitler party, absolutely crazy, illegal, and, and to fight again. So Steiner was attacked in 22 when he gave public lectures in Germany. It was the year before, and in fact he stopped any public activities in Germany in 22 till the end of his life because it made no more sense if he gave public lectures. There were groups of national socialists and they were shouting and they were trying to attack and the newspapers were full of, of defamation. And in November 23, that means just um, seven weeks before the Christmas conference happened, Hitler tried to get first the power in Germany. So the first trial to get, to get the whole power of the country happened in November 23. And Steiner said, if those people get the power, my feet can never touch any more German um, earth. Or so I can't go any more to Germany. And he also said, if they get the power, this will be, will be a disaster for Europe. And so it was in 23, it was not in 33 when it happened. And and probably you also know that in October 23, two months before the Christmas conference started, Steiner gave a lecture to the workmen of the Goethe Anum about poisons and toxic substances. And he meant also in this, in this talk uh, the cyanide, Blausäure, uh, toxic substances and their catastrophic um, effects. Not only that people die by these substances, but for the post-mortal um, journey of the cells. And Steiner was asked afterwards if something is is on the is prepared in this in this sense, or and and for the coming the, the third world war, the second world war at this time. And he said, yes, things are in preparation. And the man who asked us from the United States, now he said, no, from Germany. So in a way, Steiner was aware of a very, very difficult um, future for Europe and the world. And um, when the Christmas conference was held, uh, Hitler was imprisoned. Okay, but what he was doing, he prepared. Um, that means he wrote a book, Mein Kampf, My Fight. And they were just preparing. And um, in Germany, when the Christmas conference was held, there were millions of postcards with the Hitler brought to the public. So he had a group behind him preparing the future. Just this as a little image, because in a way, we don't want to celebrate only the Christmas conference, but we are now facing other problems in our time. But I think it's good to know that this conference also was in the middle of a world of abysses. Even if we read the lectures of Steiner in the morning and in the, in, in the night, there is a complete different atmosphere. I come to the second point. It is a, a Christmas conference for the Anthroposophical Society. And to make it anew, that the good may become, as it is on the wonderful indication of your, of your conference. And you know that a year before the Christmas conference took place, the Goethe Anum was completely destroyed. So it is always good to imagine that the Christmas conference was really performed, held on the ruins. So every time when people went into the um, the hall to listen to lectures and to be part of the discussions uh, of the carp in the carpentry hall at the Goethe Anum Hill, they passed the ruins of the first building. So as a symbol or a real symbol, 
that this world isn't anymore the world of the 19th or 18th century. And in the night of the fire, I think you also commemorated here it in Canada a year before, uh, in the night of the fire and in the next morning Steiner said we will build again, but to the members of the society he said we need to rebuild the society first. We don't need a building for this society as it is. So the anthroposophical society as a more or less association of branches studying anthroposophy, this society was not able to protect the first building and will not be able to protect the second building because it was, it was, a, it was a world in flames. I said post-war or civil war and if we bring such an impulse as anthroposophy with such a building and free schools and a school for spiritual science, then you need a society to keep it. And the outer society, so the general society, did not want to have such buildings, such impulses, such initiatives. The society which wanted to have it was the anthroposophical one, but Steiner suffered from this anthroposophical society to a certain extent, saying, yes, but we can't, we, we have to do something. We, we are responsible for this Goetheanum or for the Waldorf schools or for the organic farms. We can't just retire and study anthroposophy. We can do this if we had no foundations in the outer world. But as soon as we have a Waldorf school existing in the world or a school for spiritual science or an anthroposophical clinic, then we need a, protecting, a protective society which in a way takes over uh, the destiny of these institutions or feels that her own destiny is linked to the destiny of these institutions. And then if the newspapers are full of negative propaganda about anthroposophy is crazy or dangerous or esoteric in a negative way, then the society has to respond. There must be a power in the world saying what anthroposophy is. And if the negative propaganda is, is really influencing all the partly naive or innocent souls, all those people who just read newspapers or listening to the TV or, and then they get the impression that anthroposophy is crazy or dangerous or, and so on, then a society has to stand for it. <coughs> Dr. Steiner always said that uh, we have also a society for cardiology, a society of cardiologists, and they have to stand for the science of the heart in the public if there is a need for it. And now we have a society expert for anthroposophy, and they have to stand in the public if the public mind is wrong or they have to work that people get the truth instead of the distortion. And in a way he felt really not, not happy with the existing anthroposophical society, even if he absolutely, um, absolutely supported the study groups for anthroposophy, but it's not enough. It is not enough and he wanted a society to take over responsibility. And he made this quite clear. If not, there, must, there is no sense to have a second building, uh, a school for spiritual science. But there is no alternative in a way because the Waldorf schools were existing, the clinics were existing. We have to go forward. And it was a difficult year, 23, because Dr. Steiner tried in many of the <coughs> meetings of the society members, first of all in Germany, to bring to awareness, to consciousness, <coughs> this problem that the society, the anthroposophical one, I mean, has to change. But in fact, if we study now the documents, um, they did not understand Dr. Steiner. And in a way, they did not know what he was envisioning. In a way, they did not understand why he was complaining or even criticizing 
he was always so positive and encouraging. And now there was such a negative mood in a way. And in a way they were not really close to politics. I think they were not really aware of, of the disaster coming. They had a feeling that the disaster is in the past. It was the First World War, but it's over. But Steiner was facing, envisioning the next step to the abyss. And they had, they had a mission, but they did not see. I mean, there were people interested in anthroposophy. And some of them, they had their normal lives. Apart from anthroposophy, they had their job and they did what they did. And in, in their free time, they studied anthroposophy. So wonderful. But Steiner now said, we need more, at least on the level of the society. I mean, people are free to study anthroposophy for their soul, for their private life. But if we have a, a society, this is a public organ. And this society has tasks. And he wanted to bring this to a certain awareness. But as I mentioned, they, they did not really understand what, what he said. And in a way, he waited. If there are impulses, if they see the need, he was not giving lectures about the society. He was just sitting there on a seat. And once he mentioned, said, I have, n I have not to reorganize the anthroposophical society. I have to address those who have turned to anthroposophy. The anthroposophical society, you decide its fate. So it was not a society for Steiner. And he was no member. In a, set, in a way, he was a spiritual teacher. And it was not his idea to found an anthroposophical society. It was absolutely needed, but he was always a spiritual teacher and the society should encourage his research, his publications, and in fact it did. I mean, it was Mary Steiner who founded a publishing house. It was Mary Steiner for the anthroposophical society who organized the conferences. As this, organized, as this conference was organized with so much um, activities and we, know we need people to organize these things. And Steiner always admired these activities, but it was not his own job to organize the conference and to organize the society. And he waited if people see after the abyss of the destruction of the Goetheanum and the abyss of the time, if there is a need of the change of the anthroposophical society. But in fact, it did not happen in Germany, more or less. We can also say they had other problems. It was a poor country now. And in a way, people were without any courage. And they did not know. They, did, they couldn't see the way. I mean, they were happy that they met each other as anthroposophists and, and survived the war. And, but they had no clear vision what could be uh, the task of the anthroposophical society for the next few years. And in fact, the first Goetheanum, they had seen it as a, a place for the mystery dramas and, um, and for some wonderful conferences. But the idea of a university for spiritual science, a school for spiritual science, they, most of them, the majority, never, never got the idea. They did not really know what Steiner meant if he said school for spiritual science. Um, for them, as I mentioned, the Goethe Arnhem was the home of the society and for arts performances, but um, they had no clear utopia in a positive way in their mind. In February 23, there is a letter of Ita Wegmann where she's saying from personal conversation with Dr. Steiner that Steiner in a way said Germany will, um, will undergo decay. So the German society and Germany at all won't play an important role for the future in a positive way. And we have to see that from the Goetheanum there should be direct 
connections to other societies than the German anthroposophical society. And it's good to know that the German society was more or less the society at all for anthroposophy. Many members in other countries were linked to the German society. So the executive council of the whole anthroposophical society was situated in Stuttgart. And there, were no, there was no Canadian anthroposophical society at this time, as far as I know. There was only one in Switzerland, an independent one, and, a, and one in Sweden. But all the other countries, also France and Great Britain, they had a lot of anthroposophists, but they were members, yes, more or less of the German society. And now Steiner said what we, what we need is societies for anthroposophy in all of these other countries and then getting them linked to Dornach. So in a way, a transformation has to be done. Um, the the Goetheanum shouldn't be any more, let's say, the building for the German society just be in the borderline because Munich did not accept the plan for the building, so they escaped just to Basel, just over the the borderline, but he said what we need is an, on this neutral ground of Switzerland a home place for a world society of anthroposophy. And this is a totally different image than most of the members had before. And he said that the national societies, autonomous, the Canadian and the one in Norway, they should feel that the Goetheanum is also their place. So in a way that the question of rebuilding is not a German question. It is a question to the international cosmopolitical anthroposophical society. Do we want to have such a building in the, Goethe, in the Switzerland for all of us, even if we don't have a chance to go there, but we know that it is belonging to us, it is close to our heart. Do we want to have a school for spiritual science there, out of all the societies which has to be founded now, have to be founded now in all countries. So he brought such an image. This was interesting for Ita Wegmann, who was never a German person. Ita Wegmann grew up in Indonesia, in Java, and later on came back to Europe. And he always had this cosmopolitan element so and so far also Vancouver and Vancouver Island and for her this was the image of the future a world society for anthroposophy a building in the in, in the neutral Switzerland for all of them where they could meet and even if they can't go there because airplanes are too expensive they feel a kind of connection or maybe they get a book from there or later on also television or radio. So in a way connected, but ma mainly inwardly also connected. And this was a new vision. I want to mention a third point and then coming to the conference. The third point is Steiner's own path to the Christmas conference in the year 23. So there was a lot of activity for encouraging a new image of the society, but apart from that, Steiner gave wonderful lecture circle courses. And I want to, main, to name only one element. In some of the lectures, he said, we need a new relationship to anthroposophy. I mean, we study it since 20 years, but it is not a system of ideas. It is not a collection of books and writings and lectures. It is a living being. So anthroposophy is a living being. And we need a relationship as members, as, as friends of the anthroposophy to this living being. A direct personal connection. This living being is knocking on your own heart, saying, let me in. I am yourself. I am your true human being. So in a way, what is anthroposophy? Not only a new type of philosophy, an extension of German idealism or whatever, 
but an essence, an entity, a spiritual being incarnating more and more in this earthly realm by support of a society. The society as a kind of organization enabling the incarnation process of this spiritual being. This was a new perception for many of the members that more a necessary relationship, an intimate relationship to anthroposophy as a living substance. This is one of some other motifs in Steiner preparing the future. But when Steiner took the decision to overtake the society, because this was the big step of the Christmas conference, that Steiner became the president of the society. He, he himself overtook the full responsibility for the society before has not been a member yet. We don't know exactly. We know from Ita Wegmann's memories that he said in November to her, if you help me, I will do that. But until November, he was still waiting for initiatives out of the society to bring it to a new level. So it was a late decision in the course of 1923 that Steiner overtook this responsibility. And this was for him a very difficult decision as well, because he said there is an enormous risk if I do it personally, because his own mission was not to organize the physical body. His own mission was this, I would say, communication with the spiritual being of anthroposophy and all the hierarchies around it. In a way, research in anthroposophy is a conversation Steiner held, a dialogue. He held over years with the spiritual powers around anthroposophy and anthroposophy itself. And in a way, this was what he had to do, to go into this dialogue and to bring the results or the insights out of this dialogue to the earthly realm, what, he call, what we call his books his writings and his lectures. But they are the end result of this, yes, I would, mean, I would call it a dialogue, a kind of communication with the spirit. And he was not sure if this communication is going on the same way if he is the man, the person in creating the physical organ. This is a different task and also how to say the society, 12,000 members at this time, part of them quite difficult people with all their personal longings, interests, egotism, desires. I wouldn't say it was unhealthy, but it is a kind of a social body with all its problematic shadow sides and with the lighter aspects. Steiner always took time and always went into conversation with the members and he was always very devoted to the members but never responsible, responsible for the whole society as, a, as an, an organ. He, and in a way he said later, I did not know if I go into this responsibility, if this communication and research will be untouched by this, not spoiled by physical belongings. And it was no question of time, he said. No, this was not the problem that it takes a lot of time and the philosophical society is time consuming. No, he said it was another question. It was a spiritual question. Originally, the one who is doing the research should not be the same. And when Annie Besant was the leader of the Theosophical Society and the leader 
of the esoteric school for theosophy and he said this is a, a, a strong mistake. This was in 97 or he said you can't be the leader of an esoteric school and the one who is responsible for the society. There are strong letters from Rudolf Steiner from 97 and now he was more or less doing the same. And it was not his original um, intention. In a way this was a step he did not know what will be the outcome. In a way, it was not, it was not designed by destiny. In a way, it was, he decided to do without knowing the result, without knowing the outcome. And I mean, we all know such biographical situations, but maybe not on this level, where we feel the old security, maybe the old sense of our biography is fading away or it is not enough for the next step. We have to take the risk out of nothing with no security, also no inner security because in a way Dr. Steiner did not know what would be the inner result, not the outer question, the inner and at a certain point he took the decision to go on and waiting what will, what will happen. And as Ita Wegman said, it was end of November 23. So that means two weeks after Hitler's trial to get the power in Germany. I don't want to combine them, to link them too close together. But I said in a way, the Christmas conference was an answer. And in a way, I think he saw that he need, he needed to, to try it at least and to go into this situation. And at the end of November, the decision was made and beginning of December, um, it is clear that something will happen. From a letter of Ita Wegmann, we know that she is writing to a Stuttgart branch leader this branch leader wanted to come with some suggestions for the future to the Christmas conference and she said Ita Wegman, yes please come but your suggestions and proposals they can keep it in Stuttgart it's no more needed Dr. Steiner will overtake it here with some co-workers and he has his vision so please come but forget your own suggestions I mean for us it, it seems to be a little bit <laughs> but in a way it was clear for Ita Wegmann that now there will be a new step and the members had over nine months time for their suggestions and proposals but they were not enough for a new society. Now Steiner took over the risk and to Murray Steiner he wrote in a letter Rudolf Steiner that for him this will be the last chance for anthroposophy, um, the last hopes is the Christmas conference for the society. I mean not for anthroposophy as a being, but if the society and the School for Spiritual Science as the heart of the society will be prepared now or not. For Dr. Steiner it was open how it will happen. And it was also open <coughs> how many people will come. It was also open for you probably how many people will come to your conference now in Manitoba and for Steiner it was also open and in a letter to Mary Steiner, she was in Berlin at this time, he's saying um, everything now de depends on the Christmas event, on the anniversary of the fire, if it's becoming a worthy one, also by the numbers of participants. If this would not be the case, I would consider it best not to build at all. After the bitter meetings in London and The Hague, these were meetings for the national societies and he realized that the members has no, have no clue what is needed. Bitter meetings, he said. Things can go well here in Dornach after all, but one must also do everything for this. He prepared the conference spiritually and socially 
Ita Wegman prepared a conference in organizing beds and sleeping places. They had not enough beds in Switzerland, so she organized um, big rooms and carpets. And I mean, you know this from Manitoba, how to organize tents. And Ita Wegman also organized tents, so she would love to be here, I would say. I mean, <laughs> this kind of situation in the middle of the rain, with no Goethe Arnum, nothing, and no, um, and no coffee in the morning. I mean, um, <laughs> next morning, but uh, today. Um, she would have loved it, because this is uh, how things become in you. I mean, it's not organized on, on the level of um, that it's all there. So it is a new starting point, and it's a crisis. And so she prepared a lot for that people could come and invited them and organized very cheap uh, possibilities uh, where they could stay because Switzerland was at this time still very, also very expensive. And if you came from Germany after the war, you could not afford to go to Switzerland and to buy a meal and, and so on. So she tried to organize the money that the students could come, the young people could come and they were very important for Dr. Steiner. He said, we need a society for the young people of the modern age. We need a new type of society to overtake the responsibility for anthroposophy in the world. And um, Steiner had conversations with the co-workers in the new executive council before the conference was held. And the Dornach members were informed on the uh, 22nd of December, so two days before the conference started about the new Executive Council and they were sitting beside Steiner before the Christmas conference. So in a way they had an archetypal image of what will happen now in the conference itself. Now the conference itself I think if you know a little bit the story of the last uh, 35 minutes it is totally um, astonishing if you go into the lectures, this mood, I mean this mood of light and joy and warmth and humor. I mean there's a lot of seriousness of course in the lectures, in the contents, but it's a wonderful mood in the whole conference. It's all building up in a, in a destroyed situation. And in one lecture, Steiner said, uh, we must think at this meeting, actually everywhere in all cases, of building up and not of tearing down. So there were so many forces of destruction, uh, dissociation, conflict in the in, in milieu of the world, in the world itself. But this conference, as a counter impulse, was centered on the good with a hopeful spirit uh, for a new anthroposophical society, a luminous, he said, strahlend. So there should be a lightful organ should be built. And, and people who went to the Christmas conference, hopefully also from, uh, from Canada, at this, as this you know better than me, they, they wrote in their memories, there was such a, a breathless expectation <coughs> in between the people. So in a way they all felt something very important is on the way. A mood of expectation <coughs> and also of high festivity. So it was in a way, I mean it was all poor from the country, from, from the location. Um, but there was an image of inner resurrection. Steiner said an inner resurrection festival of the human soul. A resurrection festival or also a mood of Easter after the destruction of the first building but also the destruction of Europe flaming up Christmas light he said spiritual fire in the heart and that's what we perceive if you think as anthroposophists in the direction of the Christmas conference this kind of flaming heart, but it's so important to see the contrast, not only to focus on this lightful aspect, I said a kind of an answer. 
and participants, and hopefully also of this conference here, in a certain way, they felt that if they went home, they felt transformed. Willem Seilmans van Emichow said it was as a kind of a birth. He, he realized, experienced a re, reborn in the spirit as an individuality. Ita Wegman said we all became different persons <laughs> by this conference or by this event, or, but the terminus is not enough. A conference is a conference and an event is an event. But this was a process. This was a process of transforming and enlightening human souls. And of course, something happened there, as you all know, this so-called foundation laying. And this was, as Sergei Prokofiev always underlined, it was not only a meditation. I mean, we got the meditation to remind and to live with it and to, in a way, to internal, internalize uh, this substance which is living in the foundation stone meditation, but the foundation stone meditation and the foundation stone itself, it is not the same. Sergei tried to say it is the, the meditation is the envelope of the stone, but this is also an image and it's not so f easy to find the appropriate images for this relationship in between the stone and the meditative verse or what we hear and, and also perform on Eurythmy and the stone as a stone and what kind of substance is living in that stone. This Steiner called it a love foundation stone and said we have to form it and to shape it and then to internalize, internalize it into our heart. A love foundation stone. He, he did not say, but in a way there is trail substance. A lot of people felt it who took part. And when they said we felt transformed as human beings, it was not only by the act of the foundation stone lying, but obviously there was a connection to it. A kind of a life germ, Steiner said, is living in this stone. And for this ritual, it was kind of a ritual of this laying of the foundation stone, Steiner closed the door of the carpentry hall. He took the key and closed the door. And then he, he had the key in, and some of them, they were outside, and they heard it from the outside. So it was, something happened there. Simon said it was a mystery act, in fact. And now we will try on the Christmas conference this year in the Goethe Anung, and I think in many countries also, to realize and also to, yeah, to, to confront ourselves also with this mystery act. We can't recapture, we can't copy it, but in a way we need a deeper understanding of what happened there. A mystery act and Seilmans, this Netherlands anthroposophist, said in full public. The first mystery act in full public. Now you can say these were all members of the anthroposophical society, but Simon said they were very different in their relationship to anthroposophy. It was more or less an average of our time. Uh, you can't say this was a, a special crew by destiny. I mean, the reasons why, why they had a card um, or not were very, very different. He said it was public. The first mystery act in full public. I mean, maybe the first one was the mystery of Golgotha. I would say, in full public. But a kind of, I don't want to compare it at all, but in a way, yes, it's a new time of history where the spirituality has to be brought to the world and not only to special groups with special streams and seclusiveness, but 
to the full public. This was the impression of Willem Salomons. And it was announced before that most important of the Christmas concerts will be the first two days. You could read this uh, in, the, in, in the Goethe Arnhem newspaper. So the, this Goethe Arnhem, Albert Steffen was inviting to the conference all the members of the society worldwide and said most important will be the first two days. Steiner will give the headlines of the future and then by the foundation Stein Lowing, Stefan wrote um, the society, the international general anthroposophical society will receive its consecration. This is was written in the Wochenschrift, uh, the consecration. And this is very important because it is also not a foundation stone for the second building, it is for the society. The society got the consecration, not the building. I mean, the building was out of the society, but in a way it was a foundation stone for a new community or for a new society for anthroposophy with a destiny mission, with a future orientation. And, and then after this was done, then by the meditation and the rhythm, it was all the time present in the conference, you know it. And so 70, uh, 27 times uh, the terminus Menschensäle was spoken by Steiner. 27 times because of the rhythm and so on. Menschensäle. So it was a true um, dedication for human soul. And forming this new society, we know the statutes Dr. Steiner was working on, 14 statutes, and for this new gathering. But maybe you are, if you are not so familiar with the story of the society, you felt a little bit shocked by Steiner's leadership. On, on the way, he decided to take over the responsibility and in so far, Leadership, But on the other side, and this is very important to understand the Christmas conference, he wanted to have it, the society, not as one higher, from a hierarchy directed. So he brought the statutes, but as proposals, he said. I mean, he worked 40 days, no, four weeks on the statutes, but he said these are proposals. And they, all the members got them. Um, the, wo the wording was distributed at the beginning of the Christmas conference and Steiner wanted to discuss each point. That really the members read and reflect and think and discuss. So a joint discussion on the final wording. And there were changes. Very interesting, this conversation. And the second social point I want to mention that he wanted to have reports from the country societies. So some of them, they were quite a new, just founded. But so we had 15 reports from the country's societies, 15, always in the morning. And after each of these reports, Steiner said, Really, I thank you so much for this great, dedicated work for anthroposophy. So he totally respected the societies, what they try to do. I think we all feel permanently overburdened by the task of an anthroposophical society. I mean, Bert and the other friends. And I mean, we all feel all the time overburdened because we can never say we are the ones who are able to create a society Steiner envisioned. And we see the need, but how to do it practically. And we have limited possibilities. But we try. And all those people tried. So for Steiner it was always difficult to criticize because on the other side he saw the total devotion of those people and he wanted to have those reports and said to the other one, listen to the countries. I mean, the Swiss people just, they are in Switzerland. 
and they think that the Goetheanum is belonging to them. But in fact, it is belonging not, it is not Swiss property. The Goetheanum is, is, is landed there on neutral ground. But, so he wanted to have world interest of the Swiss and also the German members to what is going on with anthroposophy in so distanced countries. And then he, with the Christmas conference, he extended this weekly journal uh, Das Goetheanum and said, now we, we need weekly reports from other countries. And there were people named with personal responsibilities, 14 people also, correspondents for the next epoch of this weekly organ that they write regular reports from their countries. They are not the same than the general secretaries because Steiner wanted to have gifted writers. Some of them, they were also gifted writers, but not all of them. So Steiner was looking for gifted people who are able to report. And not just that everybody who wants to send in, yes, they can, but he also wanted to have a, a correspondent element. Then there were lectures or contributions, as you have it here in, the, in your own conference, from the work fields. So there was somebody who was talking to, in the Christmas conference about the situation of the Waldorf schools. And there was somebody talking about natural science initiatives in anthroposophy. There was somebody talking about the situation of anthroposophical art. Because if we think of Christmas conference, we think quite often Steiner's lectures and the evening lectures of Steiner, but there were many other contributions. And this gave a taste an image of the living society for the human soul of today. And also, I said, for the young people, that they see the world of schools and their destiny is also the destiny of the society. So a new society open to the world with a new executive council. And then, very important, the co-workers of Steiner in the council, they were all section leaders of the high school. So it was a new foundation of the society and the school for spiritual science. And now it became clearer for most members that Steiner wanted to have a kind of university with medicine as a faculty, with education as a faculty, natural science as a faculty, and many others. And what means university? This means research in a new type of medicine, teaching in this new type of medicine, enabling people to become anthroposophical therapists and helping, supporting anthroposophical institutions in this field. So Ita Wegmann's clinic as a high school clinic was Steiner's intention. And he wanted also to have a, a Waldorf school on the hill of the Goethe Arnhem, which was difficult with the Swiss uh, authorities, the locals, but so that's, and the co-workers in the council were section leaders. That means it is not the same, the society and the university or the School for Spiritual Science, but there is a close relationship. And, um, yeah, looking to the uh, <coughs> limited time, um, maybe two last elements. One, it is very important for me at least, it is such a serious foundation, the Christmas conference, and such, in such a difficult world. But it's interesting to see that Steiner did it with such a, I would say, humorful um, attitude. Ita Wegmann said it was so interesting to see Steiner in the Christmas conference. He was lucky. He came with this wonderful um, fresh um, atmosphere. It was all future. And in a way, after all this burden of the past, the war and the problems of the society and economy, it was such an enthusiasm, such a, a loving atmosphere. And also the humor was an element. Steiner not only gave these wonderful lectures, he also made all the announcements about the seats and the carpets 
about the found objects, about everything. And they should give back the step and so on. And, and then he said, yeah, we have not enough space. So the locals, he said, so the Swiss people around, uh, they should take place outside of the building. And they should be uh, rained on. It was the same, it was rainy. <laughs> and in fact, the only um, protected space was inside the carpentry, but it was too small for 700 people. So he said the Dorna friends, um, they have to be outside. And this is not out of some uh, vindictiveness, he said. <laughs> um, this is because of, um, we have guests here. <laughs> and um, in so far, and he said it with such a wonderful humor. This, um, and so people were really sitting around on stacks of boards. They were on work benches, on window latches. They stood against the walls. They had heavy coats and blankets, as you have. It was extremely cold. The old. The only warm place was the canteen um, afterwards. But uh, this carpentry was quite um, cold. But they created warmth. And Seiner had this elastic step, Ita Wegman said, this shining face. He was happy. So don't allow the destructiveness to come in. I mean, knowing about that it's everywhere. And not being again Essenians saying, no, Ariman is outside, so he's always with us. But creating on another level, yes, a new substance for anthroposophy, a new decision for the spirit, and also a new courage to represent anthroposophy in that world, in this existing world, that anthroposophy can live among people. And he wanted to create a new courage of representing, conducting anthroposophical affairs in that world. So spirit recalling, it means to recall the situation, I think, but far beyond. Spirit recalling also means but this is more common under anthroposophists, a kind of an insight that these people coming together in Dornach carpentry shop and also in other places, they have a destiny. Spirit recalling means also remind yourself that you are incarnated, incarnated as an individuality for tasks on, in this earthly situation, in this time, to take over this task. And in 24, he gave the karma lectures about the tasks, the destiny tasks of the society. But this destiny was present in the carpentry shop without talking too much. In the evening lectures, he talked about old spiritual impulses. So let's say the history of the society. How can we, be, how can we gain a, a capacity in following serving spiritual impulses from the spiritual world. And the Pacific society has to follow spiritual impulses. But we need courage and we need each other. Because, yes, only if two or three are in my name together, then I can be with them. So we are all individuals, but the society question is this, the question for two or three, or two or three hundred, or hundred thousand. So there was a new beginning of spirit recalling, recalling of the past, but also recalling of the time in which we live, at this time. And you heard it in the morning, this, the verse, and also the recalling within the limbs, I mean, that we really have to do anthroposophy, which is in the working groups also very present, that we have it in the limbs, in this world of space, that we, it is part of our, our biography, and we need these spirits of strength.
to fulfill it in a way. And the strength, and this is maybe the really last point, comes out of the heart. For me, the Christmas conference has to do with the mystery of the heart as an organ, as a Christ organ of mankind. The society, he said, belongs to our deepest heart matters. This heart is really an organ of destiny and cognition. And it's interesting that uh, the foundation stone was laid into the heart, not into the brain and not into the limbs, even if we need the limbs and the heads. But it's laid into the heart. And he also said the problems of the anthroposophical society they can only be solved in the heart. The harmony of the heart, speaking together. So, a conference of the, of the mystery of the heart, in a way. Yeah, I hope that I gave you a kind of an image of this... Um, event or this process of transformation and now is the break and then the working groups but I hope that this image now just coming to Manitoba from this very special hill in Switzerland and connecting um, that this is image is something we, we should live with or we can live with and it's for me it's very appropriate to be here in this situation in the tent in the middle of the rain, in a world with an unknown future. And this is an atmosphere of Christmas conference, even if we like the sunshine and we hope that it will come back. But this situation, and then to, yes, to find these power forces in the mystery of the heart. Thank you so much for your attention.